The Saiyans. The modern day Jim Bro inspiration is primarily thanks to these alien monkey martial arts bodybuilders of Dragon Ball Z, Kryptonians, the overpowered sun absorbing species of DC Comics, and Viltramites, the insanely durable powerhouses of Invincible who'd make SpongeBob envious for their immaculate facial hair. They were bad. You should have died at birth. I've seen many great videos talking about what would be the best hybrid of these species and also comparing all their genetics in depth. And def go check out those videos when you get the chance. But from my years of personal training, my love of fitness, kinesiology, and all stuff nerdy, I always wonder what would be the best species to realistically become on our real world planet. But whenever I see people talk about this certain discussion, I always see them talk about it in a way where they clearly ignore certain things. Oh, if I became a Saiyan, I'd go Super Saiyan and fly around and blast stuff and train in gravity chambers and get stronger and I'd be such a beast, bruh. And I'm like, cool, cool, but you have to realize just because you got Saiyan genetics doesn't mean that you instantaneously learn all their abilities and techniques that we saw characters have to train to get. So it wouldn't be like a Ben 10 watch which turns you into the pinnacle of your species. Also, you gotta take into account personal finances and our world's realistic technology. And I don't say this to be a killjoy, not at all, but I think it becomes vastly more interesting on what it would be like if you actually achieve those genetics in our real world, but see how far you can actually grow in this world. So to keep things interesting, Let's see what would happen if realistically tomorrow you just woke up with Saiyan genetics, Kryptonian genetics, or Viltrumite genetics and see what would be the best overall path in this real world due to the limitations of this world and just see how that would play out. So we'll look at five things. One, natural physical ability, so like what you just wake up with, what you can do naturally without having to train or do anything with it. Two, superpower, so some things you have to like, you know, tailor, some things activate automatically, some things that you're gonna definitely have to work for. Three, genetics you know just how the species body reacts and stuff like that especially with our world Four, we're gonna look at the ease of use of this ability like the ease of use of all the abilities just combined and then five we'll look at weaknesses and then we'll just see what is the best overall for our plane of existence also we will be going off if you turn to a full-blooded version of that species not a hybrid like Gohan and Mark who get bonuses because of them having both human and the alien species blood though I will be using some footage of invincible the hero to get my point across but think of it like uh, werewolf rules. A person who gets bit by a werewolf wouldn't be called a werewolf hybrid, they just a werewolf now. A person who gets bit by a vampire in turns wouldn't be a vampire hybrid, they just a vampire. Think of it like that for when I'm talking going forward. And let's get to it. Starting with... Since this is a weeb channel, let's start off with my personal favorite, the Saiyans. So, if you woke up tomorrow as a full-blooded Saiyan, you'd definitely be stronger muscle-wise, tendon-wise, and bone-wise, while also having better stamina, and probably just being much more energetic overall. Instead of having to drink coffee, your movement will actually boost you better than ever. You'd also probably grow a tail, which would be sick. Unless you're someone of my complexion, because then it just gives all these motherfuckers ammo. But to see what you'd be capable of, we gotta go back to OG Dragon Ball and look at Kid Goku at the start before training with Master Roshi to get a baseline of strength of a full-blooded Saiyan who did not grow up on a planet with 10 times gravity like Planet Vegeta had. Now, Kid Goku did train with Grandpa Gohan, who was trained by Roshi, but I feel he mainly learned martial arts rather than gain his super strength and speed, since when he was talking to Krillin when they were racing, he said, no one taught me how to run, that'd be silly. So, you'll be strong enough to lift up a car, and fast enough to run 100 meters in 8 seconds. You'd also be much more durable as Kid Goku got caught off guard as a child and tanked bullets and axes numerous times. Super wants you to forget about that, but don't. It's called DBS for a reason. Granted, those attacks would still very much hurt, but it would be much better than just instant death. And if you somehow got near death, you'd come back even stronger thanks to your Zenkai boots. But depending on your injury, your healing time may take a while. Your power output for sprinting, jumping, and punching would elevate as well, and you'd be able to crack rocks and trees with your fists and jump from high areas and land without shattering your legs. Also, take into consideration, Goku is a low-class Saiyan. So the average Saiyan in these conditions could be a bit better, but still not insanely OP yet. Some other abilities will have to be learned, but we'll talk about that later on in this video. Next, let's talk Viltrumites. You wake up and very similar to a Saiyan, you're now much stronger, much faster, have much more endurance, and are more powerful. Also, you are much more naturally durable. You could even say you're... But learning how to fly while well, easier than an Earth Saiyan learning the Buku Jutsu technique is gonna take some work before it becomes natural and tons of practice is still needed. Also, if you love pools in the ocean, drowning will never be an issue for you. 
I can hold my breath for weeks. Damn, you could go have tea with Cthulhu and Godzilla. And even though most things can't hurt you, you now have accelerated healing too. Isn't that a gem? Next, let's talk Kryptonians, but unlike Saiyans and Viltrumites, there are many variations of Kryptonians. So many different interpretations, comic versions, movie versions, cartoon versions, TV versions, video game versions, etc. And some just have straight up different ways how the powers activate. For example, sometimes new Kryptonians getting yellow sunlight can activate their powers very gradually, like piece by piece, but then other times it's shown that it could be very overwhelming because too many things are happening at once. So I'm going to be talking about it as if it's the latter. If you woke up on a sunny day, your natural abilities could probably feel very overwhelming initially. Hopefully it wouldn't happen all at once and like other versions, your powers just steadily grow as you bake in the yellow sun, but it could also be that you'd immediately have to get used to it because X-ray vision activating randomly, hearing everything, your insane super strength, your speed, durability, power, and hopefully your heat vision doesn't accidentally homeland or your family. It could be a complete overload to the senses if it all happened at once and probably lead to a terrible panic attack of just being so overstimulated. So you'd have to take care and master each thing individually, which isn't impossible, but would be a bit of a challenge from the get-go. But if you can do that, then now you're pretty much the equivalent of strongman Brian Shaw walking among newborn toddlers. Then you could get a feeling of how to fly just by practicing it, but overall it'd be a very intense experience like for a lot of people. At the end of the video, we'll compare and contrast each section and I'm very curious to hear y'all's thoughts as well. But now we're going on to the fun stuff. Starting with Saiyans again, the powers we see them do range from shooting key blasts, flight, teleportation, transformations, reading minds, telekinesis, fusion, and more all very cool abilities. The problem then becomes, how the fuck do you learn to do this in our real life world? Cause again, we're not going by Ben 10 rules where you wake up with all the powers of a blooper Saiyan 3. Goku had many teachers, experiences, and specific training environments to get as strong as he did from his grandfather, Master Roshi, Korin, Kami, and Mr. Popo, yeah that tail's coming off, King Kai, tons of unseen other world fighters, and then of course the god of destruction Beerus and the angel Whis. That's like three to four different gods and our earth constantly argues of there being one. And training environments ranging from his home in the mountains, Master Roshi's turtle hermit training, climbing Korin Tower and then drinking the sacred water which was regular tap water, then exploring all of Earth on foot, then drinking the Ultra Divine Water, which was basically poison to everyone else but gave him a power boost to kill King Piccolo, Kami's Lookout, Snake Way, King Kai's 10 times gravity planet, the gravity chamber on his way to Namek, planet Yardrat, all of Earth again, the hyperbolic time chamber, the afterlife for seven years, which equates to thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years of training, apparently, and King Kai's planet just for fun, and then Beerus and Whis's planet and the hyperbolic time chamber multiple times after. So a lot of stuff Goku learned would take exponentially longer in our world because A, you gotta do it all on your own and go through a ton of trial and error, and B, more importantly, most stuff Goku went through would sadly not be possible here because a lot of stuff in Dragon Ball's world sadly doesn't exist in our world yet. So you can't attain those certain experiences. Even the gravity chamber we have here would be very underwhelming and that's if you could even get to one. Don't mistake thinking that you're invulnerable just because you're as strong as early DB Goku. Alas, you're still killable at this point and you'd probably have to go to like some ancient mountain with like some actual like martial arts sensei to like learn to master your key and all that stuff. As well as read a ton of books on key control that you actually gotta dig for the good stuff because actual key control is not readily available information like that. And thankfully too, because if you've seen Gen V, a bunch of TikTokers would just be doing that sort of shit if they learned it. Though you could make the childhood dream of mastering flight come true just by mastering the episode that was shown here. And Super Saiyan could happen if you were strong enough and underwent enough stress. Oh wait, I'm sorry, that's when it actually meant something, excuse me. <clears throat> now it's some SL midichlorian bullshit and a tingly feeling in the back. DBS for a reason. So while some things are deaf out of grasp, you'd still be able to use the series as a training guide for things you can at least do on this earth. The main caveat being it would take you a lot longer to reach certain things. Also, it'd be a good idea to have a full moon preparation kit or get that tail cut off so that you don't accidentally kill your family, friends, pets, and just loved ones in general. Next up, Viltramite. Honestly, when you get down to it, a lot of their powers are stuff that you get with the base stats. Super strength, super speed, super endurance, insane durability, increased power, and you can fly in space if you want to. Viltramites don't shoot eye lasers or have ice breath. It's all pretty much just we fly and we throw hands. Simple yet beautiful. 
And for Kryptonians, the better question is, what can't you do when you absorb so much yellow sunlight? But the consistent basics are flight, laser eyes, frost breath, x-ray vision, unless you're looking through lead, telescopic vision, super hearing, strength, speed, durability, super brain for processing and retaining information, and much, much more if you decide to spend time baking in the sun, since you pretty much be a solar battery. Also, fun fact, you wouldn't even have to eat or drink as long as you got a yellow sun. Like, literally, you can go and bake, and that gives you all the nutritional needs you need. For Saiyans, you get a few cool new attributes. You stay young longer until you're about 80 and then you age. When you heal, you come back stronger than before every time. Your metabolism is going to have you burning a lot of calories at rest, so you're gonna need to eat a ton. So if you're not making money, you better put those powers to use or go out and start hunting your own meals like Kid Goku used to do. And then with that Saiyan blood, you're gonna be all about the smoke, constantly wanting to fight. Real talk, you'd probably get antsy enough to like fly to where the best gyms are, where like the top fighters in the world, like the best boxers, the best MMA people are, and just like challenge them. Like imagine walking up to Francis Ngannou being like, oh, big man, Francis, big, big fan, my man. You absolutely crushed against Tyson Fury. You are a freaking beast, man, monster, king stuff. Never forget that. I have nothing but respect for you. But run your hands, you big bitch. Though to be honest, because of that, until aliens make themselves known and stop getting themselves piped in Mexico, you'd probably start to feel apathetic when you have nothing to challenge yourself with. Next, for Viltrumites, when it comes to aging, you will be around for thousands of years before you even look 30. And if you're older than that, when you get those Viltrum powers, you're still gonna be looking good. You also get stronger with age too, sort of like how now you are much stronger than your infant self ever was. Now. That may seem lonely, you know, just being around that long and will definitely give you that saying goodbye to your pet feeling times a thousand since Omni-Man said you'll outlast everyone you ever known and ever loved. But whenever you bone someone for impregnation, your kids are going to be able to live as long as you do so you'll never be alone. But depending on who you are as a person, you'll never have that one love. To some people, that's a bonus, but to others, that's a critical thing. And we don't want to go into Abalama territory with our offspring now, but another thing you have to consider is when we age, Age, time does appear to be moving so much faster year after year. It's so weird when you recognize it. I remember being excited for various movies when I was still in school and it feeling like it took forever for them to come out. And then for modern movies, I feel like I see the premiere trailer and then a blip happens and the film is just on its way out. Thor actually covered this masterfully in the comics when he talks about how he never remembers battles. And then going to Kryptonians, shit, not only do you get powers, but until the heat death of the universe, you can potentially live forever until our sun phases out if you have a good yellow sun like legit that yellow sun for a lot of these kryptonians and a lot of healthy livable environments means you're just coasting but you would probably face the same dilemma as a viltrumite and thor by being around too long now that's not to say that all uh, kryptonians live to be you know thousands of years old it like really depends but it is just a thing that it is a possibility if you go to that yellow sun all the base physical stats as mentioned earlier would be different for each species. For Saiyans, depending on how strong you get, you can walk around and not have to worry about breaking things unnecessarily. But as a Viltrumite and Kryptonian, you'd def feel like you'd live in a world made of cardboard, which sounds beast on paper till you accidentally high-five your best friend and are left looking like an orgy at Homelander's place. Also, power-wise, Saiyans, it's gonna take a lot of work to master and obtain more advanced abilities, and some of which you'll never even be able to. Viltrumite, it'll take some work and fine-tuning, and Kryptonian, depending on how quickly you master, can be insanely painful from senses overload to ease of life once you get all your stuff on point. Starting with Saiyans, they have a few. Due to their metabolism, they must eat a large number of calories daily. If not, they won't be able to function well. Kid Goku used to be out of commission if he wasn't able to eat enough. Also, their tails, if squeezed, can cause enough pain that will incapacitate them. But this can be trained away as we saw with Kid Goku, Nappa, and Vegeta. Rad has never even tried, bruh. Another thing is, while they are durable, they are still killable. Poison and diseases can take effect on them. Hell, future Goku died because of a heart virus. And for Viltrumites, uh, this could be a bit of a spoiler, so if you want to just, you know, save it. I'll put a timestamp if you want to skip. And uh, due to their delicately balanced, sensitive inner ears to accommodate their powers of flight, certain sounds and frequencies can actually destabilize a Viltrumite's equilibrium, and once powerful enough, can even kill them. 
So, you know, their ears, their ears are basically their kryptonite. And for Kryptonians, we all know what kryptonite is, but in this specific scenario, in the real world, you're just obtaining the powers of a Kryptonian, but kryptonite isn't just gonna magically spawn around you. I'm stronger, I'm smarter, I'm better, I am better! But also, magic is a weakness, so never fight this motherfucker. And red sun radiation, which completely nullifies yellow sun radiation, which boosts their powers, and we actually have red suns in our universe. Like, there are red suns all over our galaxy, and our sun will eventually become one, but realistically, unless someone has like a red sun gun, you don't have to really worry about it. But it'd still be a hassle, so just stay away from them. Now that we've ranked each of these five stats, which do you think wins each? Type it down below, I'm curious to see your thoughts. And so I'll tell you what I personally think right now. When it comes to base physical stats in our world, I'm more intrigued by the Saiyan anatomy because as a person who loves fitness, I'm all about self-improvement. And while you're as strong as a Saiyan, you're not too strong and you can still find ways to improve. For Viltrumite and Kryptonian stats, while they are superior at a baseline, I def prefer steady growth rather than a large leap at first. And if you want to learn more about that, check out my video here where I talk about why super strength would actually suck for fitness people. Superpowers wise, I think the abilities of a Kryptonian are very enticing, but the living in a world made of cardboard feels excessive to me. And with Viltrumites, it's cool, but very limited. With Saiyans, I feel like you could do a lot of stuff and surprise yourself with what you can learn, so I like that. Genetics wise, after watching The Good Place, I've learned living forever without your loved ones can be a drag. So while the longevity of Viltrumites and the immortality of Kryptonians seem interesting, I'm choosing Saiyan. Ease of use would probably go to Viltrumite as all the primary abilities are physical based and then you can teach yourself how to fly. While Saiyans and Kryptonians def take a lot of fine tuning, then weaknesses I feel in this world would be like, you know, without Kryptonite, Kryptonians pretty much have this on lock. I mean, red sunlight is hard to get. Those red UV things wouldn't even do much to you. You'd be able to get out the way fast enough. And then after you master your powers, nothing can hurt you. Viltrumites have their, you know, ear trouble and Saiyans can still die of diseases. So overall, no real surprise here. I personally think like Saiyan genetics is the one I vibe with the most just cause like I like that ability of just not being too strong and being able to constantly improve yourself cause that's why I love fitness. It's just seeing myself grow stronger and stronger and just like, you know, potentially having no limits that way. I just think that's so fun. Like being overpowered right from the get go seems very much like it would lead to like some Saitama curse where it's like, it's fun at first, but then it's just like, okay, yeah, this is, I, 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 I'm too powerful here. I like have to be very careful. Like I don't just like pop everything right away. So I feel like that would just be like very mentally draining in a sort of way for me personally. But again, you watching right now for those five categories, tell me what your thoughts are. Let's start a discussion down below. I love having these talks. Like it's not a thing where I'm saying I'm right, you're wrong. It's I'm very curious to hear your personal opinions and your personal thoughts and your personal perspectives because everybody's different reacts differently. And be sure to type the words ultimate hybrid. It lets me see who watched the video all the way to the end and I love seeing that like I just I love it so much and again I got so much stuff I'm working on right now for anyone who's actually trying to train like a Saiyan be sure to check out my programs in the description box down below that can help you like ascend I also got tons of free stuff on my channel I'm working on a cookbook also working on a ton of big videos like I've been taking my time with these bigger videos just because they're super fun for me and uh, again thank you all so much for all your support always appreciate y'all remember like I always say I'm your friendly neighborhood Jack's Blade and thank you dudes and dudettes for watching and keep Keep calm, booyah on, and don't forget, moment I Hope you have a great rest of your day and like go become an ultimate hybrid like any of these people are. But like go be the best you possible. I have faith in you. Go do it. And for my $5 patron shoutouts for the month of November, Femto, John Paul Meyer, Damien the Human, Illegally Sane, and Rex Ashcraft, y'all are super just saying. And a big shout out to all these supporters on screen for helping with the polls that made this video happen. Y'all rock.